Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this wonderful and exciting discussion, we're talking about some applications of natural language processing and then the evolution of natural language processing tools in Python, right? So NLP is a very nice field now, it is trending very well. It has several applications, right? So from email filtering or spam detection to sentiment analysis, to chatbots like ChatGPT, to social media monitoring, summarization, predictive analysis, like predictive test, and several of them, right? So it can be used to do a lot of things. It can also be used for test classification, information extraction, question answering, and a lot. These are some of the applications of NLP. So now let's see the various evolution or progression of how we came to arrive at this particular point. So this is a simple chat that I designed to help understand the progression of NLP tools in Python, right? So in the beginning was NLTK, right? So we are not talking before 2000s, before the 2000, we are just started from 2000, just the last 22 years ago. So in the beginning was NLTK, right? Natural Language Toolkit, which is a very nice, powerful tool that was very, very useful when we were in our universities when we were trying to learn about natural language processing. It's one of the nicest tools available, right? You could do part of speed tagging and the rest. Then from NLTK came test blob, right? So this test blob was built on top of NLTK. And with test blob, there was a nice feature of sentiment analysis, which is one of the applications that we saw here, right? Sentiment analysis, which is a very nice application. There's also some here, right? So we were able to do most of our sentiment analysis with test blob, right? So now even it is very, very useful for sentiment analysis. So it was a very nice tool, right? Let me make it down. I hope everybody can see it. That was test blob. So it was very nice, useful, very powerful. Then from there, we came around 2007, we had scikit-learn, very nice machine learning library. And people use, started using scikit-learn to do some NLP tasks like spam detection, like test classification, right? Very like supervised machine learning to use it in NLP applications, which was very cool. So this was just machine learning stuff. Then there came Jensen around the same time, 2009. Jensen was for topic modeling for unsupervised machine learning for topic clustering, which was very, very useful and very powerful. From that, we could do summarization. That is extractive format of summarization because we could pick different topics and then weigh them and then find the most occurring words and build summaries from them, which was a very nice library. And then around the same time, after some time, we had work to work to VEC and then we have global around 2004. Then there came a very nice library called, called NLP right around before global and stuff, which is also very useful from Stanford, very nice with powerful features. Then all of a sudden in 20, 2015, there came Spacey. So Spacey was a very exciting technology, very powerful NLP library that changed the world, right? Because it brought some new features into the scene. It brought named entity recognition to a very high level, industrial level, right? So Spacey was built on top of like having different models already trained and we use those models to detect some stuff. So we have space, space with different forms of models, which was a very nice concept. And there was also Allen NLP around the same time. Then in 2015 also there came TensorFlow, right? And then Keras later on. And then it was used for machine learning and for deep learning, right? So that was the era in which most of these NLP tools started to change from machine learning or heuristic approach to deep learning base, right? So around this time when TensorFlow and then PyTorch came later on to 2016. And around the same time, there came FastTest, right? With T5 model from, I don't know whether it was Google or something, yeah. Then there came from Hugging Face, right? Transformers from Ion, Ion, I've forgotten the name of this, Ion. Let me check the name. Yeah, I think it's Ilya. There's Ilya and then there is Ilya, right? There are two Ilyas, right? And Ashish, they designed uh, transformers and then attention is all you need, right? Which was around 2017, from there came transformers. And just as NLTK was very useful, scikit-learn was also very useful for machine learning. And then 
Spacey transformed it in a way. And then when there was the inception of PyTorch and TensorFlow deep learning, it moved NLP tools to a different approach. Transformers also moved NLP tools to a different approach altogether. So now we're not using machine learning most of the time, we're using deep learning, right? And then we're using attention encoder, decoder, auto encoders and stuff, so which transformed NLP tools forever. And then there was transfer learning in which you could train a model, pre-trained model, and then use it to do a lot of stuff. So transformers were very useful in the progression of NLP tools. From there, we also had a uh, different forms of transformers. And so we have hacking phase. They had different pre-trained models, which were very huge. That is a little bit of the inception of large language models. And there was Flare, which was also very useful, combining some of these things. And there was Elmo. So all, all of these things were built on top of transformer technology, the idea. Then there came around 2008, 18, we had BET, right, bidirectional. And then we had all of these things. There was also around the same time, there were RNN, there were convolutional nets, LS nets, all of these different deep learning models and algorithms, which were used for NLP, for sequence to sequence tasks. Then there was BET from Google, there was Roberta from Facebook around the same time. There was SLNet, there was Lambda, there was Megatron, different powerful machine learning models or deep learning models which were used for natural language processing and they were committed to tools to be used to do many tasks then in there was also gpt right which is gen uh, generative I've forgotten the name and there was like gpt which is like still built on the idea behind transformers right is generative pre-trained transformers right so transformer technology this concept here was very very useful in the evolution of natural language processing tools to where we are now in 2023. And then it was iterated upon to have GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3, GPT-3.5, GPT-4. And that is where we have large language models, right? So it started coming from here around this time. Species 2 was also a large language model, but not very, very large. Not very large, but now we have very, very large language models, which have millions of parameters right, which are trained on huge sums of data. So that is the progression of NLP tools from my perspective, right? I'm sure maybe I missed some of them, like there was Spark NLP, which was used for huge sums of data, right? So applying the same NLP concept, but on huge struct, huge sums of data using Spark technology, which is the clusters, drivers, power processing stuff, which was around 2017. And there was John Snow Labs working with Spark NLP, which was used in clinical NLP and different stuff. So this is the progression of NLP tools. So we have moved, this is just like 22 years, right? We moved from NLTK to test block, which was useful for sentiment analysis, to scikit lane, which is not a, an NLP tool, but could be used to do test classification, to Gensem for topic modeling, to these vectorizers, right, where to vec, to Allen NLP, to Spacey, the industrial strength NLP, which brought name entity recognition to a higher level and some forms of machine learning models, which were, you would download it and use it to fast test, right, which was also very useful with T5 and stuff, T3. Then most of these were built on PyTorch, TensorFlow. Then they came Transformers, then they came Flare, Elmo, Bert, Alberta, Roberta, and all their beds family of language models and then GPT and then we are now in GPT-3 and the rest. So we don't know what the future is going to hold. I'm sure there's going to be something very powerful beyond all of these things that is going to make all of these things look like nothing. But amazingly, it is just a progression, right? So we are built upon all of these things. So without these things here, we will not, we'll never have reached here. So these are kudos to all the people that worked and and, and improved upon all of these tools to bring us to this particular point. So that is the progression of NLP tools. So as it progresses, it increases in its capa capacity and capability, and we begin to be able to do a lot of things. So for example, like there is this image I wanted to show here, if you check this one, right? So first, as we move on, as we progress, 
we started with these basic stuff with NLTK and most of the libraries could do this, right? But as time went on, we moved from all of these st stuff to higher levels of application, such as entity recognition, machine translation, right? Converting from one language to another language, summarization. So initially it was just extractive summarization, but with the inception of deep learning models, we could do high levels of abstractive summarization, paraphrasing with all of these pre-trained transformers. Then there was information extraction, spell and grammar checking, and all of these wonderful applications, right? Since it is test, right? Now they are all being applied to code, right? Because code is also in a way test. That's why we have code gen generation applications of NLP, which is very cool and very nice. So since, as I was saying, since code is actually test, right? So all of these applications can be applied. So now with ChatGPT, you could see that we can do question and answering, summarizing, test, test to command, natural language to Stripe API. All of these stuff can be done, right? Classification, SQL, translate, because it's still test. You could explain the code because it's still test. And there are several applications of it, right? So that is the progression of natural language tools, right, in Python. Of course, as time goes on, there's going to be more stuff that we have no idea of. That is something simple I want to share with you. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you like it, let me know in the comment section below. And in case you know some other tools that I forgot to add, you can also add it to the comment section. See you another time. Stay blessed. Bye.